Hello, my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to this video with some news. So I've got some news for already qualified gas engineers and I've got some news for gas engineers who have only just qualified and are about to come gas safe registered. Before we get started with this video, why don't you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to let you know when I'm uploading these videos. So just a couple of things for the guys who are already gas safe registered. We have had as a training organisation, we have had an email from gas safe and first of all it says all gas engineers now will not have an exemption from the 31st of March everybody will have to do their reassessment if they're due. Also, if they have gone over 12 months, so if your ACS certificate elapsed in February the 1st, 2020, and then you couldn't get on to do your reassessment because of this horrendous pandemic, if you go and do your ACS assessment after February the 1st, this year, 2021, then you will have to do an initial assessment. So that means instead of it costing you about 550 quid, it's going to cost you about 780 quid, or around about those figures, depending on where you do your assessment. So just make sure, guys, your 12 months hasn't elapsed, or you will have to do that initial assessment, which is a lot longer, with more exams and more practical. So don't go down that route. And make sure you get booked in before your gas safe runs out because gas safe are basically saying if your gas safe runs out, you'll have to re-register. So then you'll have to pay the, I think it's 395 quid plus fat for an initial registration with gas safe. So that's a couple of things for the guys doing reassessments. So get booked in guys. Also, this is incredibly important, you reassessment guys. At the training centre, we will need to see your ACS certificate. We need to see your original certificate. Can't be a photocopy or anything like that. We're not interested in your gas safe card. We're not interested in your gas safe registration. We're interested in your ACS certificate. So you'll need to bring it along before we can properly book you in. And here at Tomcat, we want you to email us a copy of it so we can book you in first. Because what's been happening is guys have been turning up to the centre to do the reassessment with no certificate. Now they've kind of changed the regulations now that says we cannot book you in and do the assessment until you've brought this certificate in. Now, if you've lost this certificate, this is a problem, okay? You will have to go back to the original certification body, not the training center where you did your ACS, but the certification body. So whether it's Logic, Certain, CITB, all these different uh, certification bodies, to get another copy of the certificate. And that can take up to two weeks. I've known it go on longer. Now, some of the certification bodies are brilliant. They'll email you the information or they'll email it to us. Um, but you'll need to find the certificate. So have a route round, guys, and dig out your certificate as soon as possible so you know you've got it and you don't have to get a copy. Also, we're going to need a passport photograph um, for your certificate and we're also going to need your national insurance number. So make sure you've got all that stuff ready to go before you book onto the training centre. It's massively important, guys. We've been sent this flowchart, basically, which says what happens if you haven't got the certificate and it's just going to delay everything. So make sure you've got your certificate. In fact, go and find it now. Get off your bum, pause this video and go and find your certificate and make sure you've got the right one and it's in date. Okay, it tells you down the side when it expires. So go on, pause it, go and find it. Are you back? 
Have you found it? Now, have a look down the side here because it'll tell you when you expire for your ACS and you'll need to get in touch with your um, local training centre to get booked in. Now, I've seen a load on social media, a load of guys ask how do I know when I expire for my ACS. This is the only true way you can tell down the side of your certificate. Don't ring gas safe. They won't, they'll tell you when your gas safe runs out, but they won't tell you when your ACS runs out. And if they do tell you when your ACS runs out, it's normally wrong. Okay? So, you don't ring gas safe. You ring your accreditation body, not your local training centre, your accreditation body. So it's incredibly important you don't lose this certificate. And for you guys who are new entrants and only just doing this, you're going to need to keep this safe for five years. Okay? So, I can't stress anymore, guys, how important it is that you need to bring this certificate with you and you need to keep it. So, while you've got it in front of you now, have a look what date you run out and you can book in to do your assessment six months before you expire. There's no uh, need to ring the training centre up the day before and say, I ran out yesterday. <laughs> That's, that should never happen. You've got six months and you do not lose your time. They call it an MOT. So they say you've got six months. But if it's six months and a day, then you start straight away again. So if you're booking too early, you'll lose six months. But if you're booking within the six months, you will still keep that six months, or four months, or three months, or two months, or four weeks, or whatever. But it takes six weeks for us and your accreditation body to process your paperwork up to six weeks. An average hours is less than that, it's about three or four weeks. But you've got to bear that in mind as well. It's not just as soon as you've passed your ACS, you can go back to Gas Safe Register. You can't, you won't be able to do it until the paperwork's been processed by the accreditation body. So these are all very important things you need to get sorted out now, guys. The next is for you initial guys who have just qualified and want to become gas safe registered. The first thing you're going to have to do is once you get your ACS certificate, but not until you've got your ACS certificate, you will need to get in touch with Gas Safe. You can have a do it by email or you can ring them up. You just have to give them your name, your national insurance number, where you've done your training, and they will get you on the Gas Safe register. There and then, you'll pay with your card and you'll be Gas Safe registered. It takes about 10 working days for your card and certificate to come, but they allow you to start working straight away as soon as you've paid. Okay? Then, Within the first three months, you would normally get an inspection on site. So what would happen is you would uh, get an email from GasSafe from your local GasSafe inspector and he will give you a, a date and a time when he wants to meet you. And you have to then find some work for him to have a look at. Or if there's gas in your own property and you haven't done much gas work, and our installations, it's just all basically been servicing, you can arrange to meet him at your house. That's what normally happens. But what happened to my son um, two weeks ago now, so my son's doing some work for another company and they have to put him on their gas safe registration. But they didn't have any other engineers. So... My son had to be inspected, but he wasn't inspected. He w it was an interview over the phone. And Gas Safe call this an RTA, which is a remote technical assessment. So basically, my son um, was sent an email with a code on it. He was then, the Gas Safe inspector then phoned him up. They arranged the time and dates when they were going to do the assessment. Um, the gas safe inspector then phoned him on, on the bang on time. It, it was booked in for 9, 9.30, I think, and bang on 9.30, the gas safe inspector phoned him. Tom had to then give him his name and this code 
so he knew who he was. He then proceeded to ask him a load of questions. So the first thing he asked him was all about equipment and did he have a non-contact voltage indicator on what range did it go to? Now ours go down to 12 volts, so 12 to 1000 volts AC. They want them to go lower than 50, so he said that was fine. So make sure you've got a non-contact voltage indicator. He then asked him if he had a flue gas analyzer and was the flue gas analyzer in calibration, which it was. He also asked him if he had a contingency plan for another analyzer when this one goes off for calibration or it's broken. Well, he doesn't really have any problems with analyzers because he just borrows one off me. Now, he also said to him about tightness testing. Did he use the actual analyzer for his tightness testing? But we have these little things and we also have these in the vans. So, yeah, we've got all bases covered. He then talked about consumables. Did we have the consumables? So did we have smoke? Uh, pellets, did we have leak detection fluid, do we have smoke matches. You'll also need closure plate tape. So these are all the things you need to be carrying guys. We also asked him if he had a training manual, which he did, he had one of the logic training manuals so he could refer to it as the questions were being asked. They also asked him about warning notices and obviously <laughs> The labels and stickers were needed. So he made sure he had all the consumables first before he started asking him the questions. Now the questions he asked him was broken down into what he was qualified to do. So he had questions on safety, so CCM1. He's qualified in cookers, fires and boilers and he also has meters. So he was asked questions covering all these different qualifications. He didn't have that many questions to be fair. There might have been five or six questions on each subject. So, and then you're marked on how well you did. And it's colour coded. So I think it was red, orange and green. Red meaning pff, you're rubbish. Orange meaning there's some improvement. And green meaning you're perfect. <laughs> It was, uh, it was funny because I was there for the conversation. I was listening to the conversation. He did fantastically well. God to admit, he did brilliantly. But he marked him down on his safety questions because he said he needed to prompt him. But I didn't. <laughs> I certainly didn't see any prompting. He didn't ask. Tom answered the questions. He did brilliantly. But he got green in everything else. So if you get orange or above than happy days. So the kind of questions they asked him, there was ventilation questions, there was obviously questions about flue gas analyzers and analyzing. So it was basically, the questions could have been anything. He must have a list of questions he can ask. So you, you need to be jammed up on anything, but you can actually look in your box while you're getting this assessment. Now then, after he'd asked all the questions, he told him then, Happy days, you've passed, but he would be seeing him on site before the end of this year. Um, and he would get in touch again to make arrangements to see him beforehand. So if you're a new guy going to have your gas safe inspection, first of all, do your research before guys. Don't go into it blindfolded. And same for you guys who have done initial assessment. Don't go into it blindfolded. Don't go into it thinking, ah, it'll be easy. It'll be easy. Some of the questions, Tom had to look in the book, okay, to, uh, to find the answers, especially on the ventilation, because a lot of guys don't do a lot on ventilation. My son, he does a bit of training here, and he does a lot of boiler installs as well as renewable stuff. So his knowledge is really, really good. So just make sure your knowledge is really, really good. Now, hopefully when we get back to normality, um, gas safe inspections will go back to how they used to be. And they do it in two ways. The first way is they meet you on site and they watch you basically commission a boiler or commission a fire or commission a cooker or whatever. You have to do a tightness test. 
you have to do gas rating, you have to do purging, and you have to commission the appliance to the manufacturer's instructions. That's face to face and they're with you for a morning or an afternoon. Now, there is a hotel one where they get quite a lot of guys going all in one place into a hotel or to some kind of big area where they can meet everybody and they give you a test to do, a bit of training and you do the test again afterwards. So there's two ways they can do it. I guess they're going to be doing more of the getting lots of people together once this pandemic is over to get through everybody because there's not that many inspectors to the number of engineers we've got. So hopefully that's a bit of an insight into what you were expected for your gas safe inspection. What I witnessed with the phone call, the gas safe inspector was amazing. He would just talk to Tom as if he was a, a, a normal guy. He wasn't condescending. He, he just asked him the questions and told him whether he was right. And I don't remember him actually saying anything he wasn't right with. But Tom's done a lot of research and he put a lot of effort into it because he knew he had to do it. Okay, if you've liked this video, why don't you give me a thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you've not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when I upload videos. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and don't get scared about your gas safe inspection. Enjoy it as much as you can. Cheers, guys.